Using the has pseudo selector, we can select the parent of a specific element very easily, but it's not actually called the parent selector. Its real name is the relational selector because it can do so much more than just selecting parents of elements or elements that have specific children in them. So to look at how we're gonna, or to explore some of the things that we can actually do with it, because as I said, it can do a lot more. We have this silly example set up here where I have uh, these three parent elements with different things inside of them. We have pink, we have green coming down here, and we have a ghost up in the top one. And the first thing we're gonna do is we can, as we already saw, if we has pink, so if something has pink, we can say that the border color on this, let's just say goes to white. So we can see that one selected. We can switch that out to our ghost right there and the first one selected, and I could switch that one out to our green, and then the last one becomes selected right there. So nothing too fancy, but let's say we wanna select something that comes after the one that has the pink. So what we can do for there, this one's a little bit more straightforward, but we can say has pink, and then we can do a plus star. And this looks kinda of weird, but it's super, super powerful. So has pink plus star means we're selecting the element that comes directly after something that has the pink in it which in certain situations can actually be really, really useful. But with CSS, because of our combinators, the plus, and we also have the, the tilde here, which would select more elements, like every element that follows after the one that has the pink, if we had more elements here, because we have these, there's always been certain ways that we can select things that precede other elements in CSS. What we've never been able to do before was select things that come before another element. And so the first thing a lot of people try to be able to do this, which isn't going to work, is if we do a has, uh, and what we could do is actually this. We're gonna say has uh, plus dot parent element. And let's look at how this is working. You, you can see the first two are being selected right now. And the reason the first two are being selected when I use this is because going back to the HTML, we have this parent element here, parent element here and a parent element here. So we're looking for anything, because just doing a has like this is the same as just doing a star at the front of it. So we can say anything that has a parent element that is directly after it, which is what the plus is doing. So this has a parent element directly after it, it gets the white uh, border. This one has the parent element directly after it, so it gets the white border. This one does not have a parent element after it. There's nothing coming after it. So because nothing is following there, it's not getting the white border on there. So what this feels like is we can say has, and then we could look for one that has the pink this is not going to work, even though it looks like it should work. And there's a very good reason this isn't working, and that's because we can't nest hases inside of one another. It would be really cool if we could do it, but it's the one limitation uh, that we have when it comes to using has, is we can't put one has inside of another one. This would open up a lot of possibilities, but it could it also opens up recursive behaviors, so they can't allow it. Uh, but yeah, it would be nice to have, but we can't. So there is another way around this though, because we can say has, parent element that as a descendant of that is our pink. And if we do that, the parent element is coming after it <laughs> that has a pink in there. And so this is just the pink is a direct sibling of the parent element that is coming right after this one. And we don't even need to really do that for parent element here. We could just say plus star. So the plus is really important here. So we're saying the element that any element that comes after the one that we've originally, you know, the one that we're after that has a direct sibling that is pink, or you could just drop the direct sibling. And as long as it has a pink in it as a, as a descendant somewhere, then it's going to get selected. So we can select elements that come before things that contain other things. It's really, really kind of weird. This is a strange looking selector, but hey, it gets the job done and it's kind of neat. I would probably leave a comment here to explain what this is doing if I was gonna use this in production, but kind of neat that we can do that. It actually gets better from here. There's other stuff we can do that's really interesting, but I know there's gonna be a comment somewhere saying, but what about browser support? So I'm gonna leave a link to the browser support table down in the description, but just know that as of the time of recording, it has been supported by all major browsers since 2023. So support for it is pretty good. And I don't put the tables on screen anymore because it gets out of date like a day after I put the video out. So just go check the table if you are not sure about using has in production yet. And so let's jump into something else we can do with them, which is selecting all the siblings of an element. Because again, we're dealing with the relational selector. Any, th any sort of a relation that's going on between elements, this makes possible. So to be able to do that, we're going to say has, and I'm going to start with just has pink. 
and we're gonna make this one a little bit better. So let's just say it has pink for now, the background is white, we're gonna change that, but oh my goodness, everything has gone to white, <laughs> which is not great. So let's do has, but with a direct child combinator instead. So only this is getting it, because our body has pink in it, it's a descendant, so that ends up getting flagged as true. So I'm getting here now pink as a direct child, and then we can set the background to white and only that element where pink is the direct child is getting the white background on there. So that fixes that problem. Uh, you might not always run into this issue, just so you know, uh, where if you just do like a has pink or something, it depends on the properties that you're playing with. Setting a border or a font size or something might cause some issues that you're not expecting. So the direct descendant uh, selector here could be useful. But if you're just playing with border colors or other things like we were doing earlier, then you can often get away with just having it as pink like that. Uh, but we're gonna say it has pink, but we're not gonna change, we can change the background to white, that's fine. Uh, but what we're gonna say is, if it has pink, then we can go inside of it. So then we can select, say, all of the direct chi ch child's children and switch their background to white. So we've said, oh, there is a pink in here, let's go inside of that element now and select everything and change the background to white. But I don't wanna change the pink one because we want it to stay pink, we just wanna select all of the other ones. So then here, Instead of selecting everything, we can say everything that is not dot pink. And in doing that, <laughs> there we go, we have our has pink, select everything that is not the pink, and then do something to it. In this case, we're doing background colors because we're in silly demo land, but you can come up with better other things to do with it. I've also looked at ways you can do hover with this, so when you're you could hover you know, whatever element you're not hovering over gets selected, but there's actually ways of doing that without the has selector. I just find the has makes it a little bit easier. And just to show you, if we did has pink and we just throw a hover on here, but then you can just do the not the one being hovered on. And so then the element you're not hovering on, all, all the other ones change, but not the one you're currently hovering on. So in certain situations that I guess can be kind of neat. But uh, for now, we're just gonna do this one where we're switching those. I'm gonna comment it out because I think it looks prettier this way. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a, a pretty cool one. Another thing we can do with has, which is really neat, is we can say that has, and we can use nth child here. So nth child of four. And let's say if we do that, the border color will become, let's comment this one out and just make our border color here white instead. And so if we have four or more children, so this one has four, this one has five, so they both have four children or more, uh, then we can style them and in this case we only have three so we're not styling it and I've definitely used this for different things uh, like creating if if I have a bunch of cards and I want it to overflow I can change the styling of it once we have a certain number of cards in there which can be kind of cool and you can do very specific numbers and ranges here with some complicated or more complicated nth child things so you can get exactly four children uh, or actually, it's really easy, you just do last child here. So if the fourth one is also the last child, or if the fifth one is the last child, and so you can get exact counts and then change things with your layout or whatever you want based on how many siblings the element has, which can definitely come in handy, as I said, in the right situation. And for the last thing, for everybody who's stuck around this long, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a bonus tip because we're gonna be adding in another selector that a lot of people don't know about. And let's gonna involve these green ones down here. So what, uh, you know, let's just go with dot green for now. And we're gonna say nth of type. And we're gonna say nth of type two. And we're gonna give this a border, or we'll do it in outline. We'll do an outline of two pixels dotted yellow. And I'm probably gonna make that two a lot bigger because it's hard to see. Let's do 10. And we can see we have this dotted border showing up on this one. But that's weird because I did nth of type two, but it selected the first green one. Do you know why that's happening? Uh, the reason that's happening is nth of type, and the word type here is important. We have to go back over to our index here, and nth of type goes, okay, I found my green. What type of element is this? Well, it's a div. And if it's a div, the nth of type, right? The, it's looking for the second div there. So the first green one gets it because it's the second div. And that's kind of weird and awkward and kind of annoying <laughs> that this results in this type of behavior. There is a way now to fix this. Uh, a little bit annoyingly in my own opinion, but it is what it is. We actually do an nth child now to make this work. And so if I do nth child two, it's gonna uh, go kind of crazy. So let's do a uh, parent element 
and we'll just grab our nth child too. So you can see all of them have switched over. So the second child of each one is now getting that border on it. But then what we want to do is come here and say of dot green and hit save. And now it's selected the second green element uh, and only the second green element. So it's looking for literally the second element that has a class of green on it. Uh, so it's nth child to of whatever the class name or other selector you want to put here, I think will work. Uh, this is a little bit newer, so I will include a browser support table for this in the description as well. Uh, and where this is interesting is once again, you can select, uh, we can use has here to select that because has, you can put any complicated selector in there or complex selector, I should say, that's what these are called, uh, as long as it's not using another has. So I can select the parent right there. We're getting the outline showing up on there because there's two classes of green inside of it. If I put this to three, there's none that have three classes of green in it. So not only can you count children, you can count specific classes. I've never actually used this yet, but I thought of it when I was making this video and I tested it and it worked and I'm super happy with it. So I, I don't, a bit more of a niche use case definitely, but one of those things that could come in handy in the right situation, you'd be very happy that you have it. And sometimes people complain about these types of selectors. If you're doing anything with like a CMS where you don't have full control of the markup and the DOM and adding classes and stuff, these things can be real lifesavers. So uh, yeah, I, I love this type of fun trickery that you can do with CSS. And I'm guessing if you watch this entire thing, so do you. And if you did enjoy this video and you like these types of CSS tricks, you'll probably like this one here as well, where I look at five useful tips, including two good ones on why you might want to use single color gradients. Uh, so if you want to check that video out, it is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enabler of awesome, Andrew, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.